On this edition, we look at the future of cycling with Alberto Contador's development squad, Polatec under-23 team. When you actually see him in the flesh, it's kind of, yeah, it's a bit, first it's a bit strange, but you realise why he's done what he's done. I mean, I've ridden with some riders, but I've never seen anything like that when he when he attacked in the in the training. It was like, there's the legend of the Moor as the iconic climb returns to the Tour of Flanders. The intensity is like nothing else in cycling. Even the, the mountain stage in the Tour de France don't quite match the Moor on Tour of Flanders Day. I think it's the best fan experience in sport and in cycling. But first, we're off to Ghent Wevelhem with Chantal Black. To be a professional, it takes a lot of work. You need to work hard, and otherwise you don't make it. Um, yeah, especially in the winter. I do a lot of hours, but also a lot of gym training. That's everything, that's your rest, that's your training on the bike, that's your training in the gym, that's your recovery, everything. And then when the race starts, you still work hard, but you also need to be really rested for the race. Also, it's not possible to do something next to cycling. I think for me it's everything about uh, my bike. In Holland a lot of people ride the bike. I was 11 and I did a race on my normal bike. Everyone could do it, all the children, and uh, I won that race on my city bike. This was really funny actually. Yeah, it was a high handlebar, uh, only three gears or something. <laughs> yeah, and we get the, it was like normal sports shoes and uh, you was wearing your own shorts and you get a t-shirt from the organization. And then uh, afterwards I won, I could go to the final and I also won the final. And then in the final, I, um, the first prize was the, um, a membership of a cycling club. So that's why I started. We, you have to ride, um, to ride to school by bike, so that was already 3K I think on primary school and then on the high school it was 15K for me, so then yeah, you have to ride your bike five five times a week already, yeah, that makes you, it doesn't matter what, which weather it was, you just go by bike, yeah. I think that makes you stronger. When it's cold and gray and boring, uh, yeah, when the weather is like that, you just need to do it, then it's a, your work. And yeah, at that moment, I don't like it so much, but when you come home and you did a good effort and you trained well, then I'm always happy. You can feel when you have good legs and that's always nice, but you don't really want to have good legs in training. Yeah, for your morale it's always nice to have good legs, but you have more days that you don't have good legs than you, have, you feel great on the bike. Yeah. Gent-Wevelgem was nicer for me, but because I think um, it shows that Drenthe was not a lucky shot. I was really good at the moment, and it was one week later, so yeah, it shows that that it was not that I was not lucky in Drenthe, that I was really good. Yeah, Gent-Wevelgem, it was a hard race from the beginning because there was a lot of crosswinds, and we did um, that climb, the Camelberg, a few times. Um, so yeah. I don't know, we, we just raced it and we were there uh, with five in the front group, with a group of 25, something like that. So yeah, you just do your thing, you know uh, we have to race together and we have to attack one by one. And if you see Lizzie going and she got cut, then you know this is a good moment. So yeah, I took it. Yeah, and then I heard in the radio, uh, Chantal, keep going, keep going, you have a gap. And I was like, oh. That's a long way to the finish, but yeah, I trust uh, the director totally and kept going. It really felt like a time trial, but a time trial after a long race is different than, than a normal time trial. Um, but it was really hard. Um, but it was nice to see the last 3K that I had a big gap and that I could enjoy it. Yeah, and the last m meter, you think, yeah, then you believe you're gonna win and then of course you can celebrate a bit.
I think I'm just the type for the a type of rider for the classics. So I'm built for classics, uh, and it fits me. Before the race, we have a plan, and then mostly in the race, we we keep to the plan. But you never know how you feel. So then you also need to communicate well. We respect each other. We are honest to each other. And yeah, you you can also be in the group with good legs and don't have opportunity. But yeah, that's. That's also that happens when you are in a good team. But you also need to be a bit smart and see the game of cycling and I like that about it. It's like everything. It's the wind, where the wind is coming from. If you see the road is turning, you know you have, yeah, you have to think already how the wind is at that point. You have to um, feel what other teams are doing, uh, see moves, um, yeah, because it can be the winning move, uh, positioning, tactic, everything. It's always good to know each rider, but not too much, because my experience is that you have to be focused on yourself, and then it brings you more than when you are focused on others. But of course, you need to know the strength of your concurrents. You always race for the win. Um, yeah, and I always want to win. If it's for myself or for a teammate, doesn't matter. But I like to race for the win. But it's also hard because it's a lot of pressure. And um, yeah, you never know because everyone can win the race. La gente nos conoce a nosotros, es gracias al ciclismo, es lo que sabemos hacer, es lo que nos gusta y bueno, esa, esa fue la idea. ¿no? Empezar además con una filosofía muy clara que era la de ayudar a los jóvenes ¿no? durante su, su fase de formación, durante el, mientras están intentando ser ciclistas, a que se formen no tan solo como ciclistas sino también como personas. ¿no? Honestidad, sacrificio, trabajo en equipo, eh, compañerismo, esos son el tipo de valores que, que intentamos inculcar en los corredores. Se empezó con, con Junior, eh, luego con Sub-23 y también se incorporó a la escuela de jóvenes. Y es sobre todo porque, no, aunque el ciclismo profesional en España está al máximo nivel, y en la base no está igual. En la base no hay las mismas posibilidades, no hay los mismos equipos. Y, en cierto modo, pues por eso creamos la, la fundación. Dijimos que teníamos que poner en marcha la fundación para intentar ayudar a diferentes, eh, en diferentes aspectos eh, que habían influido directamente en, en mi vida. ¿no? Eh, especialmente pues, en dos. Uno es la enfermedad que me sucedió en el 2004, el ictus. Nosotros en torno al ictus lo que tratamos es que la gente lo conozca. Eh, cuando Alberto sufrió la, la enfermedad o el ictus, eh, nosotros no sabíamos qué nos estaba pasando. ¿no? Entonces eh, la labor que hacemos en la fundación es intentar eh, comunicar los síntomas previos. Y luego, pues, el ciclismo, en la parte de las bicicletas. It seems like there's a bit of hype around the team, around Pinto in general, because we, I mean, we've been out training for a lot of hours and we ride, we take up quite a lot of space on the road with like 35 guys with the junior team riding the staff. Um, but we get a lot of respect from the from the people in Pinto. Like they want to see us do well, which is which is nice for sure. I think that the beliefs and the values that Fran and and Rafa and Lidri all the staff um, are really sort of are really pushing with us uh, is going to make us much better cyclists in the future because we just believe in hard work. Uh, muy difícil educar, es lo más complicado que, creo que tenemos en el proyecto. Intentar gestionar eh, los sueños que tú acabas de decir que tienen todos los corredores, porque todos tienen el mismo sueño, que es el de ser ciclistas profesionales. ¿no? Asusta, porque yo, por ejemplo, veo lo que hay en mi casa y lo que cuesta, y, y dices, y eso, yo digo, tengo que ser capaz, 
y no sabes si vas a ser capaz, ¿no? Porque a lo mejor mañana no soy ciclista profesional y dices, no tengo una carrera, no tengo... ¿Qué va a pasar? ¿No? Eso sí que me preocupa un poco, sobre todo si no consigo ser ciclista, ¿no? Pero yo tengo muy claro que lo que quiero ser es esto. Bueno, pues creo que está cerca, pero queda lo más difícil. El último salto que es el más complicado. Pero bueno, vamos a luchar. Yo tengo la suerte de poder entrenar con Alberto y bueno, este invierno ya he salido con él. Y ha habido un momento que se ha puesto a tope, a tope. Y de, pues yo creo que íbamos 30, nos hemos quedado 10 y luego nos hemos quedado 3, 2 corredores con él. Y bueno, yo puedo ir con él eh, y la verdad que he sufrido mucho. Es todo el día muy, muy, muy rápido. When you actually see him in the flesh, it's kind of, yeah, it's a bit, first it's a bit strange, but you realize why he's done what he's done. I mean, I've ridden with some riders, but I've never seen anything like that when he, when he attacked in the, in the training. It was like, oh, yeah, it was, it was an eye opener. <laughs> Evidentemente yo eh, estoy, estoy también muy, muy ilusionado con todos los corredores de, de la formación. Eh, yo creo que más que superar en, en victorias es que disfruten con, con lo que hagan. Si consiguen disfrutar más de lo que disfruto yo practicando mi deporte y practicando mi, mi trabajo, yo creo que eso te es va a sentirse muy, muy afortunado. Burger van Gerardsbergen is the wall of Gerardsbergen and the climb is so steep that the locals refer to it as Die Mur, which is the wall in Flemish. At its steepest, the Mur is 20%, which is one in five. Um, over the course of its length, the average gradient is 9% over about just over a kilometer, but the steepest sections are one in five. Those are the hardest bits. Eddie Plankart, who won the Tour of Flanders in 1988 described the Mur as a rendezvous with your character. And it's actually, for all that it's a very technical and varied climb, it's an utterly straightforward challenge in the race. They're 250 kilometers in, they ride as hard up it as they possibly can, and the strongest riders are left at the top. The intensity is like nothing else in cycling, even the The mountain stage in the Tour de France don't quite match the Mur on Tour of Flanders Day. I think it's the best fan experience in sport and in cycling. To remove the Mur from the race just killed the race for me because that, that was the image. It was the iconic moment. That was when the race really started and that's what I dreamed about doing as a child until I was much older. It's amazing to ride on the Mule. In the race, it's crowd. I mean, it's, it was like, uh, yeah, like riding into an arena. Especially in the old days when there was, uh, I don't know, maybe three, four thousand people on the entire climb. Yeah, the moor is really the, the symbol of Flanders. I remember when I was a kid watching uh, Tour of Flanders on TV. Uh, the first image uh, I, I recall is uh, Museu or uh, Bartoli or Baldato attacking on that, uh, on that climb. It's, it's so incredibly steep. You can't really stand on your pedals because it's cobbles. Um, but it's... Uh, It's, it's always uh, great to be there. There's a lot of spectators. Uh, it's narrow and it's, it's only small space, um, but the noise there is always, uh, always great. 
fans in general were dismayed at the murder being taken out because it was such a, it was such a photogenic part of the race, also such an important part of the race, and people don't generally like change, so they reacted very negatively against it. The reaction among the locals was fairly bad. There was a mock funeral procession held up the Moor where they carried a coffin, presumably holding the, the body of the, the dead Tour of Flanders, um, and carried it, carried it to the top of the climb. The climb as we know it, um, as the crux of the race, um, has been going since 1973. That year they moved the finish to Ninov and the Mur was placed much further, much closer to the finish of the race and that's, that's when the climb became really important. Merckx is an unusual, unusual case. The Flemish fans never really took him to their hearts because he wasn't, from, he wasn't really from Flanders. Um, he only won the race twice, I say he only won the race twice, it's still impressive to have done so, but other people have won it more times than he did, he never dominated it, and that's partially because it was a smaller, maybe more parochial race in Merckx's heyday. Also, it was an easier race when he was at his peak, and he often got to the finish in the first group, but got out sprinted by far faster sprinters. The finish was in Ghent for most of his career. So it was only when the finish moved to Ninove in 1973 um, that he was able to maybe do a bit better in the race. In 1975, he won it after attacking, I think, 75 kilometers from the end of the race and went away with one other rider, did all the work to the finish and won the race for a second time. Johan Muser was, his, his nickname was the, the Lion of Flanders and the, the moniker Lion of Flanders is only given to the, the most Flemish riders who are the very best at what they do. Museo was brilliant at the Tour of Flanders, it suited his abilities. He tended to attack from a long way out. He attacked twice to win the race at on Tenbosserstraat in Brakel, which is the town before Godardsbergen. But one of the iconic images of Johan Museo is him riding alone over the Moor van Godardsbergen to win the Tour of Flanders um, in front of his adoring fans. One of the most famous in recent years was when Fabian Kanzler and Tom Boonen, who's also a Belgian champion, were away on a long range attack. They rode together through the streets of Gerarsbergen and, and then Kanzler left Boonen for dead over the Moor. And the amount of time he put into Boonen, which was all, almost a minute by the end, was seen as one of the great all-time efforts of the race. And it was on the Moor that that attack went. I am one of the lucky guys that has won both, so um, I like the old one better. I mean, the, the new Tour of Flanders is harder, it's, it's more, more compressed into the final, more climbing into the final. On the old parcours there was more possibilities. I like that more, I mean, Tour of Flanders isn't about having the, the hardest, more climbing kilometers in the world, I mean, it's about giving different riders different opportunities. You're always going to have the best guy at the finish line. But right now, with the combination Quaramont and Paterberg, it's always been decided in the last 25 kilometers. And in the past, sometimes it was at 50, 60, 70 k's already when the decided move went. Now this year, we'll see. I mean, maybe this year will be different. It's a little bit different, but there's still the last 50 k's are almost the same. So maybe it's because I'm, I did the old Tour of Flanders more than I did the new one that I liked it more, but I like it when the race is more open. Since 2012, the race has finished in Odenard and there have been a series of laps which each differ from each other but it's been a very different beast to the way it used to be which was point to point. Um, I'd say that every, every year since 2012 there has been a great winner of the race. You can't deny the quality of the rider who's, who's won. It, there's been Tom Bonin, Fabian Kanzlara twice, Alexander Kristoff and Peter Sagan. And, and so only great riders have won the race. However, I feel that the, the, race, the race has been almost so hard that only great riders can win. One of the things I loved about the old route, which went over the Moor and then Bosberg and then the run into Ninov, was that although strong riders were obviously to the fore on that route, there was also an element where 
a cleverer rider could compete with the strongest rider. There was, you could, there was an element of, of timing, of tactics. It's great that we're going back to the Muir, and I, I think it's great that it's back into the event, but the whole point of it was, it was a focal point. That was where the final, where the big champions started hitting out and smashing each other. I think it's really nice. I think every cycling fan is happy to have the Muir back. Also, when probably uh, they are still a bit uh, sad that he doesn't have any more uh, that key position he used to have. But uh, it's also true that the new park versus Flanders for sure is uh, is also really interesting. It's new, so it doesn't have that is a uh, mythical, traditional history. I feel the new position in the race is a is a risk on the part of the organisers because it's been moved 95 kilometres, I think, from the from the end of the race, and therefore, though it will still look the same, and I'm sure many people will go partly out of nostalgia, partly because it's the Tour of Flanders, and so it will look brilliant. It won't have the same impact on the race as it it previously did. That's somewhat of a risk. I feel that. Revisiting the Moor in this way is somewhat like getting together with your old girlfriend many years later. It's, um, it's a nice idea in principle, but maybe doesn't work in reality. That's all for this week. Join us next time on InCycle, but until then, keep up to date with us across social media.